an anti-Islam video for the attack. But one of those listed in the emails quote, to underscore that these protests are rooted in the internet video and not in the broader failure of policy. In the House Oversight Hearing today, Republicans said the email, which was only released to conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch after a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit, is a smoking gun and should have been released with the rest of the Benghazi material earlier. Documents from Judicial Watch's FOIA, which were pursuant to our request more than a year and a half ago, show a direct White House role outside of talking points prepared by the intelligence community. Produce the talking points that Ambassador Rice used, not the intelligence community. But just moments ago, White House spokesman Jay Carney refuted that account yet again. You've seen the deputy director of the CIA testified repeatedly, including, I believe, last week, that uh, he produced those, the CIA produced those talking points. He made the decisions about what ultimately would go in those talking points. And uh, that he felt uh, no uh, political influence from the White House or anywhere else uh, about what should go in. The talking points that were such a focus of conversation, the, the talking points that were provided to members of Congress of both parties, and uh, by this administration to our representative who was going out on the Sunday shows to talk about uh, Benghazi and everything else that was happening in the Muslim world at the time. And everything else that was happening in the Muslim world at the time, maybe at the heart of this matter, the White House maintains that the Rhodes email in question was about how to address those multitude of other Middle East protests that were happening. Joining me now to look at all of this is Daily Beast columnist and Democratic strategist Bob Schrum and former Bush Cheney senior advisor and MSNBC contributor Robert Trainum. I'll start with you. Thank you for coming back on the show. The Bobs, our favorite Bobs. Uh, <laughs> Robert Trainum, uh, we'll use the last names this time. How significant are these emails and do you think that the right will be able to sustain the claim that this is political massaging about Benghazi when in fact it does appear from the context that he's talking about, in fact the, the quoted language we used is explicitly talking about a range of protests that were happening. Well, I think it is pretty significant. Here's the reason why. If, if, if it wasn't significant, why didn't the White House re, uh, release this email uh, back in May mm -hmm. with the 100 other emails that they released? That's number one. But also number two, when you take a look at some of the emails uh, for the, on the FOIA request back in May, they were heavily redacted. So there were a lot of things uh, that were taken out. Mm -hmm. And what's also very clear about the emails, as you and anyone can read, is that they're really trying to then uh, focus Ambassador Rice on the Internet video and not necessarily the policy. And remember the context. This was seven weeks before. Uh, the election. This was during the, uh, during the time where Mitt Romney was just about even in the polls, just after the Republican convention. And the White House, I assume, was very, very concerned that the American people, if in fact they knew the whole mm -hmm. entire picture here, not necessarily the truth, because we don't know exactly what the truth is, but the whole entire picture here, they could uh, cast some disparaging thoughts uh, in reference to the president's policy. So I, I do think these are important to answer your second question, Ronan. Uh, I don't know how far this is going to go, but the American people, not just Republicans and Democrats, but the American people, deserve the right to have all of the information uh, at the same exact time, and it's questionable as to why the White House did not do that back in May. But here's the thing, to your first point, they were surrendering documents explicitly linked to Benghazi, and their whole claim on this is that this was not an email about Benghazi, that this quote was specifically about these other protests, which were indeed sparked by that Innocence of the Muslims video. Bob Shrum, in light of all of that, does it seem like it was inappropriate for the administration not to release this with the, the prior batch of emails? Oh, I'm sure in hindsight they wish they had released it because I don't know what Daryl is smoking, but this is no smoking gun. As Robert knows from having been in the White House in a different administration, this is a very standard kind of set of talking points that people prepare before folks go on the Sunday shows. And there's one other point that I think is missed here all the time. Not only is this about the whole wave of protests that mm -hmm. were breaking out about this Internet video across the Arab world, but even if you were trying or you believed mistakenly as it turned out that that's what sparked what happened in Benghazi that's not inconsistent with saying it was an act of terror which is what the president said in the Rose Garden as we famously found out in his second debate with Mitt Romney and, and do you think that this is something that could be a significant talking point as the conservative candidates go into this next election cycle how large will this loom on the campaign trail 
Well, I think Robert will probably agree with me. It will be talked about all the time in Republican primaries. It's an obsession with the Republican base. People are going to have to cater to it. I don't think it has any impact on Hillary Clinton in the general election. I think she will run. I think she'll be the nominee. There's no evidence whatsoever mm -hmm. either that she was involved in a cover-up or alternatively that she made any of the relevant decisions about security in Benghazi. That's not what the Secretary of State and, does. And I, I will say, you know, when you get down to the substance underlying the political furor, she is someone who went to the Hill time and time again requesting security spending for our embassies. And yep. like you can slice the numbers a lot of ways, but Congress is on both sides of the aisle have made serious, serious cuts to those uh, security budgets. And there was also the question of what money you have can be put where. And with this being a secret facility, a facility that wasn't listed as a formal embassy, a lot of resources that could have been in place weren't there. So, you, so Robert, I hope can certainly I, can we can see underlying real fast? policy changes. Yes. Can I address Robert something Trump. very quickly that Bob mentioned? I, I do agree with Bob a thousand percent that the Republicans will use in the primary, but not just Benghazi. I think what they're going to do is, connect, is, help, mm. is have the American voter connect the dots here that it's a larger issue, that the White House has a credibility issue, not just on Benghazi, but also in reference to Obamacare. They say one thing in the White House, but reality says something completely different. So I think it's going to be a larger messaging issue about credibility or the lack thereof. Well, I mean, the link, but the strenuous links to uh, to Obamacare in this conversation are something that uh, rubbed Boy, me the wrong way. Slightly. I take your point, but it was it was a it was a pivot. But let's talk about that because those are both those are both issues that will loom large as we go into the next political cycle. Bob Strom, you mentioned Hillary Clinton's candidacy. Uh, one of the big news beats on that, of course, at Georgetown last night, Bill Clinton had a little fun defending his economic policies. Take a listen.